Hello everyone, welcome to my classes. In this lecture, we will discuss about the phyllaceous. So, phyllaria or the phyllaceous, or you say elephantite, elephantitis, all are one thing. That is the infections or the uh, dysfunctions in the lymphatic system. So, the phyllaria is the parasitic infections and is caused by Wisteria bancrofti. Brugia malai and the Brugia timori. So it is not the problem of India only. There are 80 countries they are facing, the people are facing with this filaria disease. And there are about 120 po million populations are affected with this filaria. So that the causative agent, the the Wisteria uh, bancrofti, so the 90 percent cases of filaria is caused by this one, that is Wisteria bancrofti. And the Brugia malai is the remainder one. So this Wisteria bancrofti, the name is coined by the two scientists. So one is the one of the Brazil scientists that is Dr. Ota Rucheria and another scientist that is Joseph Bancrofti. By their two names that is called as Usteria Bancrofti. So this how this agent, this causative agents enter to the human side. So these are carried by this vector. So these vectors are in Africa, most part of the Africa we find the anophilus species, his uh, anophilus species, this, this is the vector. In the most part of the America, we find the Culus mosquito. He is the vector of this Australia Bancrofti. In Asian country, we find the Aedes mosquito. So they are the vector by which the agent enter in our body. Then what happens? So when this Australia Bancrofti or this parasite enter in our body, then the target location on our lymphatic system. So our lymphatic systems they maintain the equilibrium because the lymphatic system health uh, the uh, by the lymphatic systems the blood volume is maintained and this have the uh, immuno uh, immuno functions in our body so if the usteria of this parasite enter into our lymphatic system and the function of the lymphatic or lymphatic vessels will be disturbed and that will be causes lymph uh, that will be causes the swelling of the lymphatic vessels so that that is called lymph uh, then uh, so it is called lymphatic filariasis. So it is also other name is a elephantitis. So elephantitis, as you see the elephant, the structure of the elephant and the elephant legs are um, what uh, just like cylinder or you say swollen uh, legs are there to carry out the heavy weight of the elephant. So this uh, similarly here also the swelling of the legs takes place. So it is named as elephantitis. So the obstruction of the lymphatic systems which results accumulation of the lymph in the lower limb. That's why this looks like the human legs, the is the water is the lymph is accumulate in the lower lower part of our leg. So this give a structure just swollen legs, just like elephant elephant legs. So that is called elephantitis. Let's see how this agent uh, the Gusteria bunkrupti enter into our body and and cause this type of elephantitis. Uh, in our body. So first the mosquito, when the mosquito bite, if the mosquito uh, having the uh, what uh, the infective form that is the larva 3, the infective form uh, of uh, this parasite larva 3 is present in the mosquito, if this mosquito takes the blood meal, so some of this larva L3 that will be entered in our body. So I have given a red color called coil structure. This is the larva L3 that will be entered in our body, entered in our skin. From the skin that penetrate towards the lymphatic systems. So here in our body, as the blood circulatory system is see, so lymphatic system is the sub branch. Okay, so the the in every in in the in the in our body, so some of the uh, region uh, lymphatic nodes we found on the neck region, axilla region, and also some growing region. These are the lymph nodes are present. So they will enter towards the lymphatic vessels. So the lymphatic vessels when they enter. Uh, they in the lymphatic vessels they become mature means they become uh, adult they the change is set to an adult uh, adult parasite so some of this uh, from from this uh, larva l3 some of the male adults will be developed and some some change into the female adult parasites so the male if you see the size that the male is uh, comparatively less in size in the female 
and they will be enter into the what lymphatic vessels so the lymphatic vessels there will be stay about 5 to 7 years there will be stay in the lymphatic systems and the female the when the on the male and female when unite or met together then they will be given larva here you see the female uh, parasites is not giving eggs is giving the larva so as it is giving the larva so it is called viviparous okay those are less eggs that is called oviparous but if the female adults the female one that after mating that that gives uh, gives the larva that is is called vivi parash and this you know, a one female uh, female uh, parasite can give 10000s of this microfilary or you say the larva mf or the larva and this larva will be what in the lymphatic systems and this larva can uh, uh, fall on the, there will be deposit in the lymphatic systems and also that will be enter into the what the blood circulation system so just uh, so now we have uh, now i have to give uh, looks on the lymphatic systems because our lymphatic systems what is lymph lymph is the fluid that is present in the uh, that is present in the lymphatic system so where this fluid come so when the our blood circulation is carried out the artery that carry oxygen and the nutrient blood to the different cell of our body so this is the structure of an artery an artery the fine particle that is uh, the smallest one is the arterioles from this arterioles the blood i have given the red one red arrow the blood reach in oxygen and uh, nutrients that is going towards the cell here the hydrostatic pressure of the blood is more in the arteries okay due to some of the fluid escape where the space between the cell the oxygen rich and the nutrient that will go to the cell and some of this space some of the fluid that will escape the space between the cell so this space is called interstitial cell means the space between the two cells so here the fluid will be enter this uh, fluid will be enter in this cell so i have green in color the green in color but it's colorless so here this fluids are be accumulated or it will be stored there and this so uh, again then the venules what happen the osmotic pressure is more hydro there is no hydrostatic hydrostatic pressure the osmotic pressure will be more so that the carbon dioxide or the waste product from the cell that will be enter into the veins that will be the enter into the vein venules then it's a vein then it's go for uh, go towards the heart for the uh, for the uh, uh, for the circulation but what about this fluid this, this this is about 10% of the fluid that will be stored there so if if this fluid is not drained then this fluid will be what stagnant there and that will be called edema edema of that area so to avoid this edema the what happens this blood this fluid the colorless fluid that will be enter to this lymphatic vessel so fine new fine fine structure fine structure of lymphatic vessels are present in in the cells because if the blood circulation the circulation is the is a system so it the lymphatic system is the sub systems okay so this this uh, fluid was open towards this lymphatic vessels and this lymphatic vessels carries the lymph now this fluid is called lymph and it is just plasma it is or not nothing other than it's a plasma as it is having no blood cells it's colorless it is a plasma and this lymph is carried to carried from the lymphatic vessels towards the lymphatic nodes and in lymphatic nodes what 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 they are, the, what is the work it filter the fluid because the fluid may be contain some pathogens and also the waste products so yes filtration will be occur in the lymph nodes and after filtration within the lymph nodes that will be again come back by the efferent vessels and again to the lymphatic trunk and that will be enter in the subclavian in the subclavian vein of our body so the fluid that will be uh, escape from the blood vessel capillaries or you say the arterioles that will be again come out and uh, throw back to the subclavian vein and throw that our blood volume will be maintained so this uh, if it is not happen then the cells will be what accumulate the fluid and the edema will be occur so to avoid this edematous or the maintain the uh, hemostatic fluid balance so the lymphatic lymphatic system 
doing the uh, doing this work and this work is carried by the lymphatic systems and the lymph will be drain out the excess fluid or the escape fluid to the subclavian vein okay what happened when this parasite adult parasite that will enter to the lymph uh, lymphatic vessels that will be what block they as there are a lump, large number of uh, adults are there they become block the area okay so that this lymphatic the fluid that will be not move and they become statis means um, that will be stagnant there and that will be called enlargement of the lymph vessels so become they become swollen okay and this uh, and is after mating there will be release the microfilary and this microfilary the larva that will be entered to the again to the blood circulation so this microfilaria that can be entered to the blood circulation so when the mosquito bite us when the mosquito again bite us the through this blood milk this microfilaria again into under to the uh, goat of the mosquito there mosquito uh, in mosquito when it enter into the goat meat goat of the mosquito then it penetrates to the thoracic muscle of the mosquito now we are talking about the mosquito cycle uh, the sexual process or the sexual development that will take place in a human body so the from the larva to the adult and the microfilaria micro this is three stages what happens inside the human body so it is called the definite host because where the uh, the sexual process is takes place that is called a definite host now we are talking about the mosquito sites so in mosquito that will be enter what the microfilary and in microfilary from the meat goat that will enter to the thoracic cavity muscles and from the thoracic one there will be some changes will be takes place that is called the molt some of the molt will be occur and after two three stages they become infective one that is called the larva three that is also filary from structure of this parasite of the larva and this is the infective one look see this is a, i have given red marks so this is now this is infected so this larva again move to the neck and the head region of the mosquito through the proboscis proboscis means through which the mosquito uh, take the blood milk through the proboscis that again come back to our body so this is the this is the l3 or the larva 3 that is the infective stage of the larva and again the larva enter into our body then here the adult they will be changed into the larva adult stage from the larva uh, from the uh, adult stage they met together and they form the larva so here the sexual development will be occur in the human body so this is the definite host and as yeah as, uh, as here the only the development as sexual development is going on so this is called an intermediate host so this way this this way the one filaria one ustaria malcropti that will be affect our the lymphatic system so due to the uh, due to the work, lymphatic systems what uh, they will not function properly the function of the lymphatic system become dysfunction so that the, the so that the lymphatic vessels dilated and uh, due to the dilations swelling occur and mostly this growing region we find this area growing region of the lower limb that will be more affected and this is uh, what the swelling will be occur in male some of the males maybe the hydrosis will be occur in female case most there may be seen the axillary node will be uh, affected so that the, uh, the breast region will be affected so these are the clinical features of filaria and uh, uh, hope you understand what is the pathogenesis or you say the pathophysiology of the uh, filaria next class we will discuss what are the programs or what are the control measures should be taken to control this filaria thank you for watching please subscribe my channel